Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Tory Lanez album, Memories Don't Die. This is the second full-length album from Ontario rapper Tory Lanez. Following up 2016's I Told You, never really did a formal review of that album, unfortunately. It was just way too long, way too cumbersome, packed in with all of these unnecessary skits. Respect to Tori on that though, he was like a stream trolling pioneer. Because why record like 30, 50 songs when you could just like record 15 and do a skit every other track? I mean, goddamn. But outside of that, what really let me down with that album was just Tori's inconsistent style. He just felt like a very focused group, part rapper, part singer, kind of an amalgamation of trendy styles and his contemporaries, obviously trying to shoot for the mainstream, but not really having that unique creative spark to maintain anyone's attention within it. I don't doubt the dude has raw talent. I mean, he certainly had enough of it to pull off a sway five fingers of death freestyle, but very little of that grit and lyrical talent actually turns up on this new album. Outside of the very rare, heartbreakingly introspective and personal moment on this album, like the song Pieces featuring 50 Cent, whose lyrics are actually so cutting and, and so painfully sad, it's actually a difficult song to listen to all the way through. So while you may get a few moments like that on this record, what Tori mostly focuses on with this album are things like very breathy, bland, airy, gentrified dance hall. Occasionally Tori is even singing on this album in this really, uh, I don't know, uh, auto-tuned very odd baby voice that doesn't even sound like him. It actually makes me think I'm listening to a different performer entirely, uh, especially on tracks like Skirt Skirt, whose lyrics devolve into absolute trash, by the way. A bulk of this album actually kind of flows a lot like Drake's More Life playlist, except maybe it's a little bit more formal. The songs seem a little bit more purposeful, a little bit more structured, but Overall, this album is just as much musical wallpaper. And while I don't totally mind that sound, uh, I guess when I'm listening to Drake do it, I, I feel like I'm actually listening to Drake, uh, not just someone merely copy him. It's actually kind of weird. Tory Lanez does not really seem all that shy about biting from Champagne Poppy on this record. I mean, I get it, he's a fellow Canadian, he is looked at like a god king in the rap game. He does set the creative tone for the mainstream in a lot of ways. So yeah, Drake's influence is felt in multiple corners of the industry, but it doesn't change the fact that uh, songs like BBWW, as well as Benevolent, sound like Drake leftovers, like circa, if you're reading this, it's too late. I even get Drake vibes on this album when Tori is like delving into these very personal, very confessional tracks, like on Tell Me or Don't Die. I mean, the consistently smoky, spacey, moody trap music, where beyond the point of if you're reading this, it's too late, it's, it's just kind of like, if you're copying this, you're too late. So not only is this album very nondescript, painfully derivative, but there's some real lame-ass features on this thing too. The Nav feature, no thank you. The Fabulous feature, double no thank you. The future appearance on this thing is painfully average, and the first four bars of the Wiz Khalifa verse on this thing it is like maybe the hardest 13 seconds to listen through on this album. It's really enough to hit the skip button. But to get back to the unoriginality of this album, uh, the song Hate to Say actually features a beat and a flow that has appeared on a few different tracks that are at least a couple years old. One being the song 3.30 AM from Six Seconds and the song Preem from this dude named Armin. And the guy who produced the Six Seconds song is actually credited as a co-producer, possibly an inspiration for the beat on this track because the beats do sound identical. They literally sound the same. And I'm not really sure if there could be a bigger acknowledgement of yes, I've heard this song and I'm basically going to copy it. Mostly this album is just really inoffensive, super smooth, bland pop rap. Occasionally it's kind of sexy on tracks like Connection or uh, even Dance For Me, but sometimes Tori can't even manage to keep that up as some of his auto-tuned vocalizations on the track Bust It Down sound absolutely ridiculous. My pull up on her block seven three. Unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of substance to this album on the whole lyrically or instrumentally. There's a few flashes in the pan here and there of what might be an inkling of an authentic artist with integrity who wants to actually make a statement and has the talent to do so. But for the most part, Tori's just trying to write bubblegum. You chew it up, 
you spit it out, and then you grab another piece of bubble gum, and that's it. But honestly, in this case, the chewing process is kind of over before the song's even done. So, oof. I'm feeling a light three on this thing. It's pretty plain. A lot of lame songs on here. It's unimaginative, and Tori is just so similar in so many ways to his contemporaries, I just fail to see the point of this album's existence. Tran. Zishin. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave a thoughtful comment in the comments if you're feeling like you're full of thoughts. Okay. Anthony Fantano. Tory Lanes, Memories Don't Die. Over here next to my head, another video you could check out or the link to subscribe to the channel forever.